This video will describe the mechanics and utility of inferior vena cava ultrasound in predicting volume responsiveness. With the patient laying supine, identify the costal margin and xiphoid process. Using a linear or cardiac probe or a curvilinear abdominal probe, position the probe two to four finger breadths below the costal margin with a probe marker pointing in the nine o'clock position. This gives an axial view of the abdomen and helps discern the IVC from the aorta as well as identify the vertebral column. Adjust the ultrasound to center on the inferior vena cava and turn the probe counterclockwise with the probe marker to six o'clock to obtain a longitudinal view of the inferior vena cava. If you rock or tilt the probe cranially, you identify a view of the liver, hepatic veins, as well as the inferior vena cava emptying into the right atrium. Several things in this view are essential to distinguish the inferior vena cava from the aorta. First, the IVC runs through the liver, whereas the aorta runs below the liver. Second, hepatic veins empty into the inferior vena cava. Finally, the inferior vena cava must empty into the right atrium. If you cannot identify all three signs, specificity of the exam decreases significantly. Once this view is obtained, collapsibility is measured or estimated within one centimeter of the hepatic veins emptying into the IVC. IVC collapsibility is the decrease in size of the inferior vena cava with a positive pressure breath. While IVC collapsibility can be carefully measured using ultrasound, an estimated collapsibility is as valuable as a measured. In these examples, you can discern a collapsible IVC on the left from a non-collapsible IVC on the right. In summary, an IVC collapsibility greater than 40% is specific but less sensitive for fluid responsiveness and can be estimated by the observer. IVC collapsibility is a valid measure whether or not the patient is on the ventilator. And while this test requires an experienced user, this can be easily taught 